Uh, so my name is Dr. Maggie Adairin Pocock, and I'm a space scientist and a science communicator. Uh, well, space scientists, I actually build satellites that go up in space. And science communicator, I like to try and translate some of the complexity of science into a simple format for everybody to understand. It was a job that I've always wanted, really. Uh, since I was a child of the age of six, I've wanted to get out into space. And it's getting sort of uh, harder and harder to envisage me getting out there. But I feel I'm doing the next best thing. And I'm building uh, instrumentation that goes out into space. My PhD was in mechanical engineering. But before that I did my degree, which was in physics. And so that was quite an interesting hybrid for me, because doing the physics and the mechanical engineering turned out to be a perfect marriage for uh, making satellites in the future. The first sort of instrumentation I was uh, working on was uh, something called a missile warning system. And this was a sort of quite uh, complex pieces, uh, piece of equipment. But what it was designed to do was warn pilots when a missile was coming and then automatically let off flares to protect the pilot and the aircraft. Parents uh, broke up when I was quite young. And so um, uh, I, sometimes I was, my mother had custody of me and sometimes my father had custody of me. And as a result, I was transferred the, across the country a lot. So um, uh, it was a, a, an interesting education system. <laughs> When I was in primary and secondary education for a long time, um, I wasn't considered to be very bright. And so um, it was always a disappointment for me because when I was a child, I, I got really hooked on space. And I told my school teachers, yeah, I want to be an astronaut, I want to go into space. And they sort of looked at me a little sadly and said, well, Maggie, you suffer from dyslexia. You're probably not going to be very academic at all. And uh, so that was always a disappointment. Uh, but my father was wonderful. And he told me that oh, if you really work hard, you know, the sky's your limit. Because my um, English and uh, my uh, sort of spelling was, wasn't very good, it meant I focused on the science subjects and I found that I was quite logical and things like that. So um, I, I admired people like Spock on Star Trek. <laughs> and so um, by using those skills, I was able to develop sort of techniques to cope with the dyslexia and sort of move on through my career. The science communication is, only, uh, is, is a recent manifestation for me uh, because uh, I have a team of scientists and engineers working for me and I've been trying to recruit people. And uh, about four years ago, I realised that I'm trying to recruit people, but I can't find people to join my team, people with the right skills. And uh, my husband uh, is also an engineer, and we met during our PhDs, and would go home and say, ah, oh, yes, you can't recruit people either, what's going on? And we suddenly realised, well, if we can't recruit people, we have jobs that we really love and enjoy, but are we telling anybody else about those jobs? So we decided that we need to get out there and encourage more people to join us. As a scientist and an engineer, I've travelled across the globe and seen some fantastic things, worked on sort of a telescopes on mountains where the stars make my heart sing to see them. And so I go to schools across the country and tell kids, yeah, this was my progression. Um, also, often when kids hear about scientists and engineers, they, say, uh, they think, um, as I say, you, you need the brain the size of a small planet to be a scientist or an, engin or an engineer. So I like to point out that you know, I was a dyslexic kid, I, I was in remedial classes you know, in some of my schools, and I went to, sort of, I think, 13 different schools when I was growing up. But that shouldn't stop you. Um, if you have a passion for something or an interest in something, that is the criteria, and that's what can drive you on. I think I really love being a scientist and an engineer. Um, we take on some of the big biggest challenges of the world. Much of the work I'm doing at the moment is associated with climate change and trying to understand how our climate is changing and viewing that from space. To be part of a team that is involved in that, to me, is fantastic. I'm doing a project with Blue Peter at the moment where I've given Blue Peter a satellite and we're going to launch it into space and kids will get an image coming from the Blue Peter 1 satellite every, uh, every week. And uh, it took a long time to set that project up. But um, uh, I did it in my spare time. But because it's so much fun, and you know, I've got a Blue Peter badge, and I'm working with Blue Peter, and I've been on the programme now, because it's so much fun, it doesn't really feel like work. <laughs>